Bravo 6, going dog. Hello everybody, and welcome back to some more Ready or Not. It is me, Zeus, bringing you guys uh, decidedly not Tarkov. I wanted to apologize for that really quick before I get into the video like super far. Um, yeah, I just couldn't get anything crazy to happen in Tarkov. I'm going to be doing a quest and that will be a video later on. I don't know when, but uh, expect a, a video later on a quest. Um, but yeah, to the video, uh, you guys all read the title and uh, I'm not going to be bashing on the game so much because that's just been done to death. So I'm instead going to be thinking of some ideas that they could implement right now that would fix the game. I have three major systems and then the way that they can implement them. So I have like the key to the castle and what should be in said castle. So uh, <clears throat> before I get into my ideas, I'm going to mention that I am just one dude. I may not have been the first to come up with these ideas. I'm just throwing them out there on the soapbox. And if you guys agree or you have any other ideas, let me know down in the comments. If you're new around here, uh, please feel free to subscribe. And if you guys leave a like on the video, maybe the algorithm will get this out there and Void will see it. So please, I'd appreciate that. Um, but without further ado, we're going to get into the first major change, which would be a skill tree. Now, um, I don't really know how to build skill trees and I'm able to steal stuff because I'm not a development studio. So uh, I have stolen the special system from uh, Fallout to basically kind of act as a guide. Maybe we don't directly copy paste this, but it's, it's a guide as to how these things could work. Um, so for those of you who don't know, special stands for strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. Um, but I only, th I only thought through this so far. So uh, you have strength, and an example of a skill that you can get when you level your strength is the ability to sprint. Maybe you can run now, maybe you can carry more um, like ammo or something like that. Um, you're a bigger person, so you're intimidating, so suspects are more likely to surrender. Something along those lines. Uh, perception, maybe you are able to just tell when doors are locked or trapped, or uh, who's that one chick in uh, Apex Legends that gets like the whispers or whatever when somebody's aiming at you? Maybe if you look at a closet, you can tell somebody's in there because you get like a whisper or like a gut feeling or something like that. Uh, maybe you know when a room is clear, your character will audibly say like, all right, room is clear, room is secure or whatever, right? Uh, the weapon highlights, maybe that happens with perception. I, I don't really know. Those are just a bunch of ideas. Maybe they can all be implemented. Maybe some are too strong or whatever, right? But I'm just going to give you guys all the ideas here. Um, endurance could be maybe your health because I don't really know where else you would get health from. So maybe because you lead a healthy lifestyle, you're, uh, you have a higher health pool. Um, maybe it increases your sprint speed or how long you can sprint for. Maybe they can like tie together at some point. Um, charisma could be like, uh, civilians are more likely to listen to you. Uh, like they'll, they will surrender easier. Same with suspects perhaps. And you could also maybe use this to, uh, like bargain or bargain, um, barter, I guess. No, a bargain would be the right word with, uh, the chief of police, maybe get some better equipment, but better unlocks, stuff like that, which we'll get into an unlock system later on spoilers, <laughs> um, but get better equipment, better weaponry, better stuff like that. More, more of like a, like a funding for the police station, right? Um, intelligence would give you like the ability to unlock doors, like, like you lock pick doors or maybe use like C2 charges or night vision goggles, stuff that requires a little bit of know how to do. Uh, maybe if you level your intelligence, you're able to use all that stuff. Um, I didn't put anything for agility or luck. I couldn't think of anything. And I also didn't want to turn this into call of duty where you're bunny hopping around corners and stuff like that. So instead I've opted to get rid of both of those for what is called a operator trait. Um, and I have basically, instead of those two, you'd get one big skill that has different, like multiple different effects. So, uh, one example is maybe you are just plain old lucky. Uh, when you get shot at, it's more likely to hit your plate instead of like your limbs. So you don't have to heal as often. You don't have a healing animation. Um, when you kick doors, they're more likely to open and perhaps not even be locked in the first place. Uh, if there's traps on doors, maybe there's a chance that they misfire and they don't go off. Um, chances for like enemies weapons to jam or something, something ridiculous. You could add whatever you wanted to it, but maybe just being lucky is a skill all of its own. Um, maybe you're a veteran. So you're uh, immune to suppression. Like you've been there before. This isn't your first gunfight, right? Uh, flashbangs don't affect you as much. CS gas doesn't affect you. Um, maybe when you would have normally been suppressed, you get like a, uh, like a damage reduction or a speed boost or something because you get adrenaline, right? Something like that. Um, maybe you're a competitive shooter before you join the police force. So um, you have really good weapon handling skills. You can aim more quickly. You can reload more quickly. 
uh, switch weapons faster, wh whatnot, right? What have you? Something that has to do with weapons handling. Um, yeah, there's just things like that. Uh, there's only a few examples, but I'm sure you guys will come up with more in the comments. Uh, the next big thing I wanted to talk about is unlocks. Now, um, when I say unlocks, I'm talking about your weapons and equipment. And I mean more equipment than the game has even mentioned. So um, your armor types where you have heavy, you have medium, you have light. Maybe instead of that, uh, it's always just heavy armor. But instead, now you can unlock up to steel plates. You can unlock side plates. And you can get extra protection areas. For example, like your groin and your legs, your shoulders, your neck, stuff like that. You get a better vest in general. Um, maybe it has better capacity to it. Uh, instead of having 11 total slots, you have 15 or whatever, right? Um, your weaponry, maybe you unlock better sights. You unlock more uh, ammo, different types of ammo. Uh, stuff like, like uh, rubber bullets, like I had mentioned in previous videos. Stuff like that. Um, and maybe just, yeah, <laughs> base that off of a... Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, how would we judge that? Well, you'd base it off of, like, at least to me, I think the way that it worked the best is to base that off of a morality system. Uh, think kind of like Dishonored, where you have high and low chaos. High is the bad ending, and low chaos is the good ending. Um, for the duration of the video, I'm just going to call these high and low, so <laughs> try to keep that in mind. But uh, for your low chaos, it means that you're following your ROE. Um, you're not just shooting everybody. You yell at them first, and then maybe you shoot them, and that's fine. Um, when, when people take hostages, you try to talk them down at first or something like that, right? And... Um, if you have to shoot them, you can, but if you're going less than lethal, you actually get a little bit of a bonus. But if you yell at them first and then shoot them, there's no, it's not a plus or a minus. It's kind of a neutral. And what you get from this is maybe you get better AI teammates because there's more funding to train them better. You get more in reserve, right? So actually that's going to be a small thing. I'm going to go on a side tangent. I think they need to kind of drop those numbers a bit. I think right now you can hold like 12 or 13 extras in your back pocket, maybe like four. Let's drop that to four. And as for the AI team, maybe instead of having four operators under your control, you have two. So you have you and two others, right? Like, I think that's probably pretty good. And then maybe with this uh, low chaos system, you can unlock having up to three with you and maybe up uh, seven in the back pocket or something like that. Right? Like people who are like trying to sign up. And the reason I say that would be good to tie it to the morality system is because it makes in world sense. If you guys are a better organization, people are going to want to work for you and they're going to help you clean up the streets, right? On the contrary, if you have your high chaos, it means that you're kind of a piece of shit and nobody's going to want to work for you. So maybe instead of having seven in your in the back pocket, right, that can join, maybe you only have like three or four or something like that. That many people just in reserve. Um, instead of having two AI teammates, you have one AI teammates or at worst, you're just on your own because they can't afford to hire anybody else. Um, you lose access to certain things. So like sights and certain weapons, certain uh, equipment, even like uh, C2 charges, the mirror guns, stuff like that is just too expensive. Um, your rig, maybe you only can have like ceramic plates in it because that's all you guys can afford. And maybe it only has front and back protection because it's, you know, it's an old style or something like that. I don't really know, but I also don't want to uh, make it so that it's negative for just shooting people. So this is going to be if you're like actively shooting civilians or and I mean, even like mistakes. If you slip and shoot a civilian, like it'll it'll be a small punishment. Now, in order to get so low that you're on your own, you're going to obviously have to be trying to play poorly. Um, but this would also obviously kind of what's the word? encourage you to play positively. You yell, you try to arrest people first, stuff like that. Um but then, yeah, that's <laughs> that's uh, that would just about cover it for uh, the unlocks system. The final major system I think that they could implement that would have some really cool effects would be procedural generation. Now, uh, procedural generation uh, is also is going to be both dependent and independent of um, the morality system. Let's assume that we're keeping the unlocks morality here, but um, it can be both dependent and independent. Now, what I mean by that is for the independent systems here. Um, you have different layouts for maps, right? Different times of day you can go. And uh, this will kind of change how the map flows. So starting with the different layouts, maybe for example, 213 has four or five different interior type designs. So the map will look a little bit different, right? Um, maybe Mindjot will have a like an exterior location, right? Maybe it's a different time of day. And this would actually impact how the game uh, plays. And I think you should be able to choose time of day because you could use this to your advantage. Um, <laughs> using Mindshot and 213 as examples, uh, let's say that um, 
Mindjot has more civilians, but less suspects during the day because uh, that's when everybody's at work. So people are there doing server work, whatever the hell that is. And there's not that many guards, but uh, at nighttime, there's a lot more guards because that's when everybody's gone. And that's when somebody's likely to try and break in and steal something, right? But on the contrary, uh, 213, well, you don't exactly want to be cooking your meth in broad daylight. So there's a lot more suspects and uh, not any civilians. There's no civilians around. But then during the day, people are there buying their meth. So maybe you get both more suspects and more civilians. So it's just more dangerous to do it during the day. But um, that would also help kind of tie into your unlocks. Well, do you have night vision? Because if not, it's going to be kind of hard to push a house with your flashlights blaring and stuff like that, right? So it kind of adds a little bit of, a little bit of layers. Now, um, while we're on the topic of uh, your morality and stuff like that, you can also make it so that different entry points have been blocked off due to like, uh, so let's say if you're in a high chaos playthrough and there's been like riots because the police are basically just state funded pirates and they're ruining everybody's lives. Um, maybe this could lead to a trash buildup, burning cars and stuff like that. Uh, maybe civilians will be more likely to call the suspects and let them know that you're you're going to them or whatever. You have a thing planned, so maybe they're a little more aggressive. Maybe they're more prepared. Um, they have more traps set up, stuff like that. Maybe um, through you being in high chaos, the uh, the people who are in charge, so let's say, for example, like 213, instead of using local people, they're calling Mindjot and getting like genuine, well-trained security personnel. And then maybe for Mindjot, they're just straight up like calling uh, the military and like they have somebody who's in a high place and they're bringing genuinely like well-armed, well-trained people that you actually have to fight now. Um, and maybe these people set up traps, so maybe there's more traps now that you've been uh, not as good, right? And then on the contrary, let's say that you've been good, um, certain different entry points will open up because the city is on your side. Maybe there's less traps because there hasn't been much of a reason to, they can't really replace people because you're not, you're not actively killing as many suspects, so they're still able to just kind of go back to uh, selling drugs or whatever they're doing, right? So they just kind of return to their jobs. Um, so maybe there's less traps, less doors are locked. There's less obstacles you would have to go through. I think that would be the way to do it. Um, but uh, that's just kind of an idea. And that kind of covers all of what I thought of for procedural generation. And now the, now the key, this is the key to the kingdom here. How they can implement this whole system is under one thing called the budget system. Now, <laughs> I kind of alluded to this earlier when I was talking about your equipment where you have better funding. Um, Basically, they could tie your skills, the unlocks, and procedural generation all into one big thing under budget, right? So, your skills, let's say you could use a portion of your budget. Let's say you have $50,000 to play with. You can put uh, some of that money towards what's called a gym. <laughs> some of you may have heard of these things known as gyms. But you're able to train your strength and endurance in the gym. So, you can upgrade that skill tree a little bit further with a gym or something like that, right? Um, perception and intelligence are trained at like a library or a tactical operations center or like a training range where you can go and learn how to use the C2 charges and the um, night vision goggles and, you know, lockpick doors, stuff like that. Um, charisma can be trained at a, well, I guess I say trained, but can be put to use at like a PR department, right? Uh, and what the PR department would do is like talking to the chief of police and getting better equipment. Maybe if you make a mistake, you shoot a civilian. It is not as bad. Maybe it kind of mitigates that for you a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> and it can kind of offset a more sloppy play style. Like if you can't really do that, uh, like if you're not good at not shooting civilians, for example, let's say you just have bad reactions. Well, it won't make it as bad on you. Um, and then obviously your budget, instead of going towards skills, you can also put it towards weaponry, stuff like that, uh, attachments, things like, think like Rainbow Six before, uh, when they used to make you buy your attachments and stuff like that, you could now put the money towards buying, wow, that voice crack was brutal, uh, you can put that towards buying weapons, you can put it towards buying attachments, you can put it towards buying better gear, things like that, for procedural generation and stuff like that, well, um, I don't really see how it would tie into that so much. Uh, the only thing I could really think of would be your training. Um, or you could maybe call in favors. You can call like... Uh, <laughs> so a civilian who lives across the street from 213 may give you some information that uh, there's a hidden tunnel system under the house and that could be a new entry point. Um, stuff like that. Mind shot. Maybe somebody could kill the power so there's not as many lights. Meaning that even if you go at nighttime, uh, the guys at Mind Jot won't be able to see you so well. Um, maybe they could like poison or uh, poison, not like kill them, but like maybe they put some like food poisoning 
something like that. They bring cookies by that uh, got most of the Mindjot security sick, so there's less people you have to deal with. Stuff like that. Just little little things you can put your budget towards. But uh, that's everything that I have. That's that's all I got. Uh, let me know if you guys think if that would make the game better or worse in the comments. If you guys have any other systems, anything else that you'd like to see implemented, do let me know. And yeah, without further ado, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And you guys, take it easy. Peace out.